Northern Lights Arena is hosting its annual high school memorial hockey tournament this weekend. Friday evening, Alpena High School took to the ice against Ann Arbor. And Alpena and Ann Arbor hit the ice looking to start the tournament off with a win. And this one was all Wildcats. In the first period, Wildcats controlling the puck, and there's a mad scramble out front. But the puck will find Colby Plowman on the doorstep. He'll slip it past the keeper to give Alpena the 1 0 lead. Later in the first, after a bad giveaway by Ann Arbor, Plowman's going to whip this wrister top shelf where Mama hides the cookie jar. It's 2 0 Alpena. Still in the first, when Alpena's Cole Baskerville will pick up the loose puck. He'll skate in undeterred and beat the netminder. It's now 3 to nothing. Later in the game, Alpena will salt this one away when Raymond McCall scores on the gorgeous deflection. Alpena knocks off Ann Arbor. Both teams will hit the ice again tomorrow. The Tigers hit the diamond Friday evening, looking to start off their second half of the season off on the right foot. A critical three-game series for the Tigers as they welcome the division foe Kansas City Royals into Comerica. Tigers will get on the scoreboard first. Bottom of the first, first batter of the game, and Ian Kinsler greets Ian Kennedy rudely. He crushes this one to left. It's a solo jack, and the Tigers are off and running with a 1-0 lead. We stay that way until the top of the sixth. Kansas City is threatening. There's two men aboard for Salvador Perez, and he drives this one the other way. Steven Moya has trouble with it in right field, and it's over his head and up against the wall. Eric Hosmer will score from second. Kinsler will then throw the ball away. Kendrys Morales will score from third. The Royals, off some bad Tigers defense, will take a 2-1 to one lead. Bottom of the seventh, and welcome back to the show. Tyler Collins goes yard work off of Luke Hochaver. Collins was called up Friday night to replace Justin Upton, who was away on bereavement. How about that show moment for Collins? We are all tied at two. Later in the seventh, Tigers with the bases loaded for Victor Martinez and grounds this ball up the middle. It's off the pitcher. Two runs will score as Kansas City can't handle the ball. Detroit has now battled all the way back to take a 4-2 lead. Top of the ninth, K-Rod on for the save, and he gets Alcides Escobar to fly out harmlessly to right. And that's your ball game. What a way to start off the second half of the season as the Tigers knock off the Royals 4-2. After months of back and forth, Tom Brady announced Friday that he's going to drop his appeal and serve his four-game suspension for his role in Deflategate. Brady's decision comes two days after his case was turned aside by the second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Brady's only hope was to take the case to the Supreme Court, but Friday on his Facebook page, Brady said, it's been a challenging 18 months and I have made the difficult decision to not proceed with the legal process. Brady's decision to drop the appeal will mean he will miss the first four games of the upcoming NFL season. He will be eligible to return to the field for week five versus the Cleveland Browns. After 36 holes of the British Open, Phil Mickelson is your leader headed into the weekend. Mickelson followed up his first round 62 with a 69 on Friday. Henrik Stenson is in its second at nine under par. Notable names who missed the cut this weekend were Ernie Els, Shane Lowry, John Daly, and Paul Casey. Third round play will pick up very early Saturday morning on the Golf Channel and NBC. And finally, it's Friday, so we head back out to the links for our weekly segment of Lessons on the Links. Hello and welcome into yet another edition of Lessons on the Links. We are back out here at the beautiful Thunder Bay Golf and Resort, back out again with club pro John Kazuski. So John, last week we worked on bunkers, and another approach this week, the chip game. So what, what is the kind that we want to look for going into just approaching this chip shot before we finally get it on the green? Well, you know, everybody faces chips during the round, and, and uh, this is where a lot of your score comes in. So Kyle, today we're going to work on a couple tips for you to help you get the ball up out of the grass a little bit easier, onto the green, and hopefully get it close to the hole so you can one putt more often. John, much different than last week with the bunker shot. This week, we want to make sure we make contact with the ball first. So just what is that approach and that perfect technique that we have to put forth to put forth an excellent chip shot? Well, you know, basically, you really want to start with your ball position first. And like you mentioned, you want to make sure that you are contacting the ball first and then the grass afterwards. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a method where I'm going to put the ball back in my stance a little bit. I'm going to have my feet together, and then we're going to work on making sure that our hands stay in front of the golf ball okay. as we make our swing. I'll go ahead and give you that example. I'm going to start with my feet together with the ball right in the middle. And then I'm going to take a little bigger step to the left and a smaller one to the right. And as you notice, the ball is slightly back in my stance. Once again, this is to make sure that I contact the ball first. Now I'm going to use a method which they call the hinge and hold method. And what that means is I'm going to hinge my hands or my wrists forward 
and I'm going to try to hold that position as I make my swing. And as I give you a practice swing here as an example, I'm hinging and I'm holding that position and you can see that my wrists are not breaking down. That's the number one fault in chipping is when our wrists break down. We don't want to see that happen. We want to lead with our wrists in our hands to make sure we contact the ball first and then the grass afterwards. As I go through a shot here, I'm taking a very light grip. The ball's back in my stance. I'm going to go ahead and lean the club or hinge the club forward, actually lean with my body a little bit, and then try to match up my backswing and follow through, keeping my head down until the ball is gone. And I'm really trying to make sure that I am contacting the ball first and then the grass afterwards, leaning left, staying left, keeping the head down until the ball is gone. And you hope you have a result like that. All right, thanks, John, for those much-needed tips. And definitely uh, this week, obviously, make contact first with the ball, and then definitely a clean follow-through. And then what was it with the hands, once again, that we want to make sure our viewers know when they want to approach that great chip shot? For a good chip shot, you really need to make sure you keep your hands in front of the club head for as long as you can, match up your backswing and your follow-through, keep your head down until the ball leaves the club face. We'll make sure to do that. All right, that's going to do it for another edition of Lesson on the Links. Be sure to tune back in next week where we will have another great tip out there for all of you golfers.